Tonight on Journey's Prime, actress Rosamund Brown, also known as the Crapping Polo, should be getting ready to begin her 90 days jail term, which she describes as a test. You know your girl is strong. Sometimes in life, you have to pass through some things to make you strong, to get to somewhere. I know it's a test. I have to go through. I'm strong. You guys know. Please, all that I need is your prayers and your support. Her lawyers meanwhile say they will appeal the sentence they believe is harsh. The, the mother and the nephews, I mean, both ought to have considered the nonsense. Uh, but well, the judge is within her, her sanity power to find the maximum of years and maintain this. She's within her, 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 her powers, so we have nothing too much. Although on social media there has been many reactions with opinions divided. What do you make of the sentence yourself? Get onto Facebook and let us know. La youth vow to continue their agitations for the release of lands they say is being unlawfully occupied by the military. Also in this bulletin, government assures the broadcasting bill being raided for parliament does not seek to censor the media. We all have a collective responsibility to ensure that the media continues to operate freely, to ensure that the media freedoms are protected, and more importantly, to ensure that the emerging threats to media practice in Ghana are kept. And business do not be too expectant. Floor prices will go down this weekend following data from bulk importers pointing to a reduction. We will hear from former CEO of the National Petroleum Authority who says oil marketing companies are not obliged to reduce prices in a de deregulated market. The movement, whether upwards or downwards, the market would allow it to pass through and uh, so that the consumers will benefit from it. Later in the bulletin, Ghana Revenue Authority accuses some operators of national security of frustrating its efforts at optimizing revenue due the state. My name is Aisha Prime. Tony Prime comes to life from our studios in Kukumlimli here in Accra. On your digital terrestrial TV because we're free to air on DSTV channel 421 and Go TV channel 144. Remember, this is a home of independent fearless, credible and impactful journalism. Do stay tuned in. Many thanks for choosing us. Let's begin with Attorney General and Minister of Justice Godfrey Yabu Adame, who has rejected suggestions a broadcasting law will amount to censorship of the media. Godfrey Adame noted this at a Ministry of Information led consultative meeting with stakeholders on broadcasting in Ghana aimed at generating a broad consensus to enact the law. As government readies itself, to lay the bill before Parliament, the Attorney General believes such a law is needed to regulate the media space. The broadcasting law, according to Minister for Information, Kojo Opon Kroma, is necessary to regulate content in the broadcasting space, which has been lacking. Therefore, we all have a collective responsibility to ensure that the media continues to operate freely, to ensure that the media freedoms are protected, and more importantly, to ensure that the emerging threats to media practice in Ghana are kept. One such threat is the sharp rise of content described as unwholesome or inappropriate by various segments of the Ghanaian society that are popping up on our broadcasting platforms. These include but are not limited to the constant portrayal of money doubling on our television, the regular seeming promotion of social vices and even sometimes criminal activity including ritual murders, pornography, and advertising of unapproved products on our broadcasting platforms. But with concerns that a broadcasting law could censor the media in breach of the constitution, Attorney General and Minister for Justice, Godfred Yebo Adami disagrees and says a regulation of the media is not unconstitutional. Whether this law is not going to amount to censorship of the media in a way, and I said that no, that's not at all. Because the constitution itself by its architecture anticipates regulation of the media. And that regulation of the media is not unconstitutional. The Ghana Journalist Association is also lending its support to the passage of the broadcasting law. Here is its president, Afil Morni. Crucially important since I've been long in coming. It's unfortunate that uh, since 2012, 
the broadcasting bill has been incubating and um, awaiting birth. And the time to give birth to this all important law is now. Deputy Ranking Member on Parliament Communication Committee, Sam George, believes the law is needed to sift quality journalism from unprofessional journalism. Do you agree with me that in every trade you've got people who are good professionals and you've got quacks in there? If you look at doctors, they are fantastic doctors who will save your life and they are quacks who will kill you. They are fantastic politicians who serve this country with all their life and all their heart and they are those who are just there to milk the public purse. You have fantastic journalism houses that put in so much resources into making sure that the highest journalistic standards, your editorial policy is good. And you've got some media houses that absolutely do not give a hoot what the standard is. They are born into the sensationalism. That's the reason why you need a broadcasting bill. A proper broadcasting bill will not censor anybody. It would rather keep the gates. You have that gatekeeping instead of censorship. On his part, chairman of the National Media Commission, Yabwedu Ayabwafo, says there's a certain expectation of the public on the NMC to regulate content in the media, a power it does not have. I think that for me and members of the National Media Commission, we are very delighted that we are engaging in this kind of exercise. You know, because it appears that in recent times, people have been expecting so much from us. Even as we realize that we live in an era of the rule of law and due process, and not arbitrariness in, in taking decisions. The Commissioner of the Ghana Revenue Authority, Keno, retired. Kwejo Damwa has issues with operatives of the national security allegedly blocking officials of the GRE from inspecting certain goods. The examination of the goods is critical in the calculation of duties. In an interview with my colleague Winston Amwa on the Joy News show Upfront, Colonel Damwa described the development as embarrassing and unacceptable. At the airport, the overall security of the airport is vested in an institution is not in the hands of customs. Mm -hmm. If you go to the seaport, the same arrangement, and the overall security of that place is vested in a state institution. So the only thing is that in playing our rules, we need to recognize the fact that others also play rules that complement or that would feed into ours. So the, I, I understand that the overall security arrangements at the airport is not vested in customs, that's why I agree. But customs, when it gets to revenue and aspects of security, customs have a role to play, and that role is mandated by status, by rules, by regulations, legislative... And that terms, should be adhered to. And that should be allowed to work. Because if you don't allow the customs officer to do his work, and you arrogate it to yourself, and you say, I have... First and foremost, let me uh, make this point clear. We have some aura of suspicion around ourselves, and that somehow affects this whole beautiful architecture okay. of interstate institutional arrangement. Mm. Um, somebody thinks that, okay, let me do this because I think this person is doing that. But if you look at the customs way of doing things, everything has an inbuilt mechanism to deal with every eventuality. Okay. So we will just have to be allowed to do what we have to. And ever since you've made that call, has that happened again? Have your officers complained? Uh, yes. It's, it's not like it's gone, it's dead. Even after uh, my still being prevented. I had a lot of calls and uh, my officers were saying, yes, this one, you've hit the nail <laughs> right on the head because this humiliation is still ongoing. And uh, I had discussed it at some other level, so I didn't want them to think that nothing was being done. But it's something that really is of concern, that we are working in the same environment, and then not that you want to go there for any um, thing of your own, but for official duties. And yet you are restricted in your movement, you are allowed to go to some parts and not others. By the port security? Yes. But let's get to La, where the youth there say they will not relent in their quest to reclaim the lands which they allege is being encouraged upon by the military. Soldiers 
on Thursday, April 15, 2021, beat and chased away demonstrators protesting over the alleged encroachment of last two lands by the military. Some of the media personnel who were there to cover the protest were also beaten and manhandled by some of the soldiers. Required papers were going on to ensure that that land is reversed to us. So well, immediately we heard the military have started developing the land. We organized our brothers and sisters from the La, some from Teshi, some from Osu, Nungwa, Gamashi, Choko, and we went there to ascertain how much the state is cheating the people of Gans. Now it has become a Gans affair. It is not a La affair because the state is taking things that belongs to the natives and they are using it without the requisite uh, agreement between our people and the military or our people and lands. So we went there. We went there without sticks. We went there without stones. We went there without anything that was harmful to man. So we went in peace. But the military came there as if we were going for an Af Afghanistan type of war. The, uh, the press was there and they saw it. The amount of guns. We have at least two gun bullets in our custody now to ens ensure that there was shooting at the place. In fact, it was the shooting that forced our people to run away. And, so, and then they started beating us. I was not among those who ran away. When the military returned, they met me and I also had my share of beating. You can see my thumb, how swell it is. And I have marks behind me. We have all ladies from this state, some of our fetish priests, who were beaten mercilessly. And some are up to now. We have three people who are now hospitalized. So you can see how much the military came there. The intention with which they came and they executed their intention fairly well to their satisfaction. We are happy. Right. Now we know how far Ghana wants to take us. Right. You heard the Oscar Niglova. He also revealed that chiefs from the La traditional council will be meeting the Minister for Lands and Natural Resources over resolving this dispute. Now, today our council will be meeting the lands and we are sure and praying to the Almighty God that something good will come out, something satisfactory. The military should not make their mind that they will put pressure on us to give them the land. It can't be possible. You can see this place. We need to develop La lands. We need to develop La. La, we are now in slums and we can't ever live in it. We have to develop, we have to educate our children. What we have is our lands. We don't have gold here, neither do we have cocoa here. The one who brought cocoa to Ghana comes from La. Although it does not, people don't mention it. Now, but we don't get anything from this. So what we have is our land, and our land is our asset. And that is what our fathers died for, and they gave it to us. We will not live for the land to go away. Then, it's better we all die than the land goes. This time, we are calling all our people from of the Gadangwe Council. All the Gadangwe, that this is the suffering of land. They should all come to our aid. And we'll tell the military that they are to safeguard the country. They are not to molest us. Right. The Ghana Revenue Authority exceeded its revised revenue target of 42.7 million last year by mobilizing over 45 million. Following the achievement, the authority has set itself a target of 60 million for this year, but the money could be more if revenue leakages are blocked. That's according to Ken Okwejo Damwa. Last year, for instance, because of COVID, we had to suspend a lot of audit activities because it meant that sending teams and because um, the aim was as much as possible to use electronic means to do things, we were not able to do a lot of the physical post-clearance audit. It had to be virtual, using the same documents that were used to clear the goods. So um, if you were not to have the opportunity to go physically to check and compare with what you have by way of documentation, then you still risk 
not realizing the maximum revenue from these transactions. The Central Region Police Command says it is adequately resourced to deal with what residents of Kaswa believe to be an alarming crime rate. The call to action in Kaswa and its environs follows news that two teenagers allegedly killed a 10-year-old boy for money rituals. Throughout this week, we have put the spotlight on what residents believe uh, is the cause of the crime rate. Highlighted uh, personal stories of victims of crimes and the way forward. Max Ogbagba has been our man on the beat and here is a wrap of his reports this week. This is the spot where 42-year-old Steven um, was standing when he was accosted um, by two men on a motorbike. We understand from eyewitnesses that they asked for his money and that was followed with a gunshot. They made a way and bolted with the money. But this place was buzzing with activities like these. Eyewitnesses say it was too late to pursue the robbers. His wife, Mamiesi Ankuma, has been narrating to me how she got to know of the killing. Mm. I'm going to know Sanji's kind of boy. Some hours time, Nami, I'm afraid, the phone. I'm afraid, you know. They shot him and bolted with his money. I called his phone some hours later. A man answered and said his phone is at the police station. He lied to me that my husband was involved in an accident. Our only hope now is the police. They should help arrest the perpetrators. We are not safe here at Kaswa Opekuma. Every day we hear issues of theft, murder and other vices. We are begging authorities to come to our aid because we are not safe here. Especially the deceased 42 year old Steven team was married for six years he left behind a five-year-old son eric asamoa is a friend of the deceased we feel very unsafe here when you are sleeping at night you are scared when you send your child you are scared it is a hot afternoon and I'm in the alleyways of a part of the refugee camp where many consider to be the den of criminals. Only young people seem to live here. Their lifestyle possibly and the place that negative tag. Here, I've met Yusuf Haruna, considered by his peers as the unofficial king of the central region. He says he does not dispute the claim that some criminals use the camp as a hideout, but says there are some good people who live here. Even sometimes there are some people use to come and find people's here to go and rob. I was here where one boy came to me said, oh, was some woman come here say she says for guys. Why well, say me they bring the woman? As they bring the woman, as you see me as a rasta man, you say, no, she can tell me her problem. So this, this one is a pregnant woman. No? Mm -hmm. And she tell me that she need a boys, made the go rob one man at Sodru. Ah. No busy, at Sodru. With that man, they make a service and loan. They are going to call one policeman, the policeman dressed like we street, normal street boys. Mm -hmm. The policeman can listen to the woman, everything. What the woman tell me, she say it again in the front of when later she even said the man is a pastor, it's a man of God. If we rob the man and we will not kill the man, the man will later come and find out that if she is the one who made they rob him. Meanwhile, a study conducted on the security situation in Kaswa has revealed the ballooning population in the area is gradually overwhelming the police. Dr. Jones Opokuwari conducted that research.
To be very honest with you, the police are challenged. You see, the population has exploded. Somewhere within the 1970s, the total population of Kaswa was around 863 people. Between 1970 to the 1990s, Kaswa's population exploded about 79 times. A lot of economic activities are, are going on there. People are moving in and out. The police is limited in terms of their capacity to profile people, to track people. It is making crime control quite difficult for the police. Let's now listen to the Central Regional Police uh, PRO who says it will collaborate with Joy News to fight the canker. Cases are being reported. And again, as police officers, we move with information. We will be liaising with Maxwell to get some of the information that he just shared on air so that we can strategize and also uh, get more uh, information from where he went. Again, what we are saying is that we know that when you get to Budumbram and its environs, a lot of uh, vehicular patrols from the divisional headquarters is going on. And again, as he had the access to this information, uh, we, uh, we always say that police is a shared responsibility. And as a stakeholder, being a journalist, we will contact him and add up to what we have to strategize to also combat crime. When crimes happen, they have to report. Because at the end of the month or week, we assess the nature of crimes that have been reported, those that we have gathered through our intelligence, and then we strategize against the next week. So through community engagement, they will get to understand why they should be sharing information with the police so that we can also do our work well. It will surprise you that uh, those who uh, have experienced crime have not gone to the police station to report. You heard the DSP Arena Pond Central Regional Police PRO, now Director General of the Ghana Maritime Authority, Thomas Kofi Alonsi, has described as worrying the fact that the fishing sector, which remains one of the most hazardous ventures in the maritime industry, remains the least regulated among the lots. According to Mr. Alonsi, cutting corners and lack of safety equipment on vessels are part of the many reasons why these fatalities are recorded at sea and has called for the need for urgent action to be taken to address the challenge. He was speaking at a stakeholder meeting of stakeholders in the maritime industry to brainstorm and come up with a document that will help in the ratification of the 2012 Cape Town Agreement. In 1999, it was established that about 24,000 fishes lose their lives yearly in the fishing sector and this number is 10 times more than deaths on merchant ships. It is therefore worrying that fishing, which is one of the most hazardous professions in the world, is also one of the least regulated in the maritime industry. Fishing vessel operators with the aim of maximizing profits neglect the safety and maintenance of their vessels, indulge in illegal fishing, and underreport their catch. They endanger the lives of fishers by cutting corners in the management of their vessels and ignore regulations that govern vessel modifications. Most of these fishing vessels usually lack sufficient onboard safety equipment and are often operated for extended periods without undergoing safety inspections. Fishers who work on such vessels are also made to work under the most indecent conditions. Ladies and gentlemen, it is for reasons such as these that the International Maritime Organization adopted the 2012 Cape Town Agreement which outlines fishing vessel standards as well as other re regulations designed to protect the safety of crews while providing a level fill for the fishing industry. So to come in this bulletin, uh, Rosman Brown, also known as the Crapin Polo, should be getting ready to begin her 90 days jail term, which she described as a test. Guys, you know your girl is strong. 
Sometimes in life, you have to pass through some things to make you strong, to get to somewhere. I know it's a test. I have to go through. I'm strong. You guys know. Please, all that I need is your prayers and your support. Her lawyers meanwhile say they will appear the sentence, they appeal the sentence they believe is harsh. The, the mother and the nephews, I mean, both ought to have considered the nonsense. Uh, but well, the, the judge within her, her sentencing power find the maximum of three years and 90 days. She's within her, 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 her powers, so we have not to do much. In business, do not be too expectant. Fuel prices will go down this weekend following data from bulk importers pointing to a reduction. We'll hear from former CEO of the National Petroleum Authority who says oil marketing companies are not obliged to reduce prices in a deregulated market. Wherever there's a movement, whether upwards or downwards, the market would allow it to pass through and uh, so that the consumers will benefit from it. There's more with Charles Aite when he takes over in the business segment. Stay tuned in. Hello, good evening. It's time for business with me, Charles Aite. We're expecting prices of petroleum products to go down this weekend based on data from bulk importers. However, there are concerns that oil marketing companies may not comply. Reacting to this on the marketplace, the former CEO of the National Petroleum Authority, John Atefua, said, oil marketing companies are not under any legal obligation to reduce prices in a deregulated market. There's expectation that um, whatever there's a movement, whether upwards or downwards, the market would allow it to pass through and uh, so that consumers will benefit from it. Uh, as to how far it comes or how to what extent they really stick with the reduction is another matter because that some may be carrying stocks from different uh, pricing windows and that may impact on when they would pass through this particular reduction. So therefore, is it justified not to comply? I, I don't know what compliance means here. You see, the, if you have a deregulated market, then you're expecting the market to determine these things. And if people don't comply, you unless it is a place where there is a monopoly, people will go to the alternative and see who, who uh, if any um, oil marketing company has reduced their price, then of course, Consumers will go there and purchase from there. I want to ask you personally, uh, you being a petroleum expert, you have seen it all, you've engaged with the players over time. What's your take on the deregulation policy? Is it really meeting up to the expectations? I think it is. But you see, for a market to be, for the uh, uh, deregulated market to really work effectively, we need to, if people need information. And places like, Joy and the media can help people to know who is doing it right. And then I'm sure people, consumers will take the right decisions. But if they are not, they are in the dark and it just goes to um, chances on a, uh, a filling station, when it's uh, light, it's, uh, empty light is on, or warning light is on, then the person will go to whoever has it and purchase from them, oblivious of the fact that somebody next door may be selling it far, far cheaper than what is buying. So information and maybe the authority as well may help consumers to know those who, who comply and those who are doing it right so that they can also get some um, business and come and help us to deepen the deregulation. Well, the government is on course with the process to finalize the digital terrestrial switch for television broadcasting. The move is part of processes to enhance the country's digitalization agenda. Speaking to journalists after taking over the facility to house the infrastructure for the process, the Minister for Communications, Eslo Osekufu, said this will ensure that one has to pay for their own television transmission. And all that will be done shortly. But what that means, once, once that is done, is that you all have to start getting ready to be paying for your carriage and transmission fees.
because the government has been carrying it for free so far, it will not continue in perpetuity. So this is just to prepare your mind that we're nearly at the end of this journey. A lot was done before we came to power in 2017. A lot has been done since we also took over and we're nearly at the end of this journey. And I must thank all the broadcasters as well who have partnered us in this journey and all the stakeholders who have also spent time and energy to contribute and make an input into this process. But very soon we will be switching off and very soon this one will no longer be my responsibility. I'm looking forward to taking this off my table and glad that we're nearly at the end of the route. Well, two other stories. Government and the parent companies of Airtel Tigo have concluded negotiations and signed an agreement to transfer the shares of the company to Ghana government. This follows the announcement of the company's departure from the Ghanaian market last year. In October 2020, Airtel and Millicom announced that they were exiting the Ghanaian market, and this agreement concludes the extensive negotiations between the parties to ensure a seamless transition and continued operation of Airtel Tigo thereafter. According to Asla Usu, the communications minister, the agreement transfers all customers' assets and agreed liabilities of Airtel Tigo to government. So it is official. The message out there is that government has finally taken over the operations of Airtel Tigo. And of course, that's how we end this edition of Business. We're back after eight. Enjoy the rest of our bulletin. Many thanks for staying with us here on Joy News Prime. Time to bring you sports. My name is Hans Mensah Ando, and we delve into boxing first. And the national amateur boxing team, the Black Bombers, they are in focus. The 100-day countdown to the Olympic Games was marked last Tuesday ahead of the multi-sport event. Many Ghanaians are interested in how well our teams and athletes are preparing. My colleague Nathaniel Lato has the very latest from the camp of the Black Bombers. The National Amateur Boxing Team, the Black Bombers, are expected to undergo a one-month intensive residential camping tour of the eastern Pacific coastal city of Fukushima in Japan ahead of the Games. Now, Fukushima, interestingly, happens to be the home city of Dr. Noguchi, who is the famous bacteriologist who found the vaccine to yellow fever here in Ghana. The national team, however, would undertake a residential tour of Ghana before going over to Japan. Two places are being considered. One of them are the coastal town of Sogakopa. The other is Akusumbo, specifically at the Right to Dream Academy. In terms of qualification spots, the Black Bombers are hoping to qualify two more boxers. One of them is former Commonwealth bronze medalist Jesse Lati and Dr. Onela Sathud, who's born of the Congolese father and a Ghanaian mother. She is hoping to set a record as the very first female Ghanaian boxer to qualify for the Olympic Games. Our head coach of the Black Stars, B. Brian Tanko, has exclusively told Joy Sport he's still hurt by the lies that led to his dismissal as assistant coach of the Black Stars. The former Borussia Dortmund striker lost his position to Karen Coach Siki back in 2019. He was accused of sabotaging then head coach Kwesia P.I. claim he vehemently denies. Ibrahim Tango has been speaking to Muftao Nabil Abdullahi. I heard a lot of things, you know. You know, in Ghana, we talk a lot that Kwesi said I was uh, undermining him, I want the job, and all these things. I mean, I never did that, but I don't want to just argue with him. <laughs> Why? Why do I have to undermine you after two years of work that I want to take your job and all these things? You see? Ah, let's leave it. Because I know, I know, <laughs> there's a lot of people who their job is to spread rumor, yeah, just yeah. to to have a favor from someone else. And I can assure you that afterwards, Coach Kwesia Pia have also, I mean, I can't say regret it, but he knows the truth now, that what was saying about me was not true. Are you, do you feel hurt that this happened? I feel hurt because of the lies. I mean, changes can come, that one is, nothing wrong about Cheney, but to lie about someone 
because you want a favor, a favor or something. That is what uh, makes me disappointed. And those people are still doing it now, even though I'm not, <laughs> I'm not uh, with the senior national team. Okay, they, they claim you, you, were being, you were undermining me, you wanted a Black Stars job, but don't you need a Black Stars job? Of course, I need, if I get the job, I will do, but I will not go and sit somewhere, or I will not go, you know, they even said I was, I went to the minister to tell him to give me the job. But the minister uh, was there, that time was uh, Honorable uh, Nisiyama, yeah. And I never, you see, I'm someone who will never go to an office, either ministry or FA, just go in there. If I don't have appointment, I will not go there, you understand, because I'm, I, I'm not used to that kind of just uh, wake up, I'm going to the FA or I'm going to the ministry to speak. What am I going to do there? If they need me, they will call me and then I'll go. So all these things were lies and, but uh, I just decided to keep quiet to uh, move on with my life. Let's get into the Ghana Premier League and Asante Kodoko have maintained their lead in the Ghana Premier League after drawing with second place Great Olympics in a week 20 fixture across Paul Stadium this afternoon. The Porcupine Warriors have amassed 35 points so far this season, just a point above the Daddy Boys who sit second on the league table. Here are the other 19 pairings um, of the Ghana Premier League. And there you see that on your screen, we'll be seeing Omina Shark take on Wafak and Faisal. We'll play Ashanti Go, those games on Saturday, on Sunday, Brecum Chelsea. We'll play Dwarfs Dreams up against Karela, Mediama Sporting Club. We'll play Legon City's Football Club, Bichem United up against Iriana Stars. 11 Wonders will take on Liberty Professionals and Accra Hearts of Folk. And the across post them take on inter allies. That's it for this installment. More sports later in the bulletin. And it's time now for showbiz. Uh, Noella Karingali is here with the very latest. Yep, yep, yep. And uh, it's quite a sad day, especially yeah, for all polo fanatics. Because mm. uh, as you know, she's been, you know, sentenced to 90 days in prison mm -hmm. and we understand in the courtroom today while the sentencing was being read uh she blurted blurted out the, the words mommy oh mommy please i beg mm -hmm. what am i going to do now okay I feel and that, so and alone. that's that is to the judge the judge so okay. basically to invo inv evoke some empathy from her from but basically the, uh, that didn't happen and she was sentenced mm -hmm. but uh, her colleague entertainers reggie rock stone and carcasse have, have been reacting i have never felt this blue man Man, I was really praying for that girl. I mean, really, I, you know, I'm fasting and stuff. I was really praying for that girl. She, Jesus Christ, you guys, you, you don't even understand how you feel. It's rough out here, yo. It's rough out here for that girl trying, man. She is trying. You know what I mean? I got, I got daughters, you know. She. She doesn't deserve a day away from her son, man. I swear. I mean, the reason why I'm emotional, you don't, you don't understand. You will never understand this. It's rough out here for these sisters, man. You seen these kids out on these streets begging? You know, she's just trying to make all that. Damn, man. Listen, folks, you know, I was on Twitter cussing at everybody. Don't worry about me. Don't worry about it, old man. But, you know, have some empathy, man. Have have love in, love in your hearts, man. You know, you need to you need to have feelings, man. Min Kotia, children's rights group was a child rights group was a zong kwa Say, who do you believe my mia kwa court? Now, who gana, who ni, who ni ka, who ni drive in fuck room? One driver a cry her own own name, own name near Koso. Kids as as young as two years, three years, four years, are umujina traffic begging for money. Kids, don't they have rights? Don't they have right to school? Eh? And no, no, be the next one about what say. Me the one I call to say one jail, you know. Children rights group. Hey, hey, why no all your why no all your more boss? Because 
Abufa na wode ni maame akɔ we na won jeli no wo jeli ni maame na how would the kid feed himself anya maame na no be feed no a very emotional carcass yeah it is there it's, it's, but yeah. away from that let's talk about Kofi Mole mm -hmm. uh, he decided today uh, it's his birthday and he, he decided did. to celebrate his birthday with autistic kids okay uh, as you know april is for uh, autism that, basically yeah, yeah. so let's take a look at what went down <laughs> Today is April 16th and April is Autism Awareness Month and then I wanted to be part of it and then I have a nephew who is autistic too and that gave me the passion like knowing about what autism really is and I felt like this is the right month and this is the right time for me to support and reach my brothers and sisters who are also in need of other things to help them to be able to live cool and comfortable in the environment so that's the reason why I chose here to celebrate my birthday with. So how is the experience like when you came here? It's your birthday, are you having fun? Yes, I've, I've been having fun with them ever since I came, Charlie. If we late, if we late for this side, we had fun, we sang, we played drums, like it was like a full entertainment here. The kids have energy. Yeah, I think they have energy more than me. I thought I was the only one with energy. Yeah, so I've, I'm, I'm so glad, I've been happy. Yeah, and it's still ongoing. We, we are about to have lunch and other things, like so many things. And not just today, a lot of things to happen. This is not our first and last time here. We'll be here a couple of times. And then the 21st, um, 25th anniversary in the next two years too, we hope to collaborate and do something major, something nice for us to all have fun together. Okay. So you got a present from them, yeah. right? Yeah, I, I got this. Yeah, so I came and I was so amazed to see how the autistic kids are able to do handy stuff like this. There's a mat, and there's bees, Shambhala bees, and there's like a painting. Oh, <laughs> 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 happy birthday to you, Kofi <laughs> Mole. For more news, log on to myjohnline.com. You get more of the stories and updates on developing story. The news continues on Joy News. Welcome back to Journey. So the rest of our stories, actress Rosemond Brown, also known as Equia Pimpolo, should be getting ready to begin her 90 days jail term after she was sentenced by an Accra Circuit Court on Friday. The actress was convicted on her own plea, having made news in June last year for posting a nude photo of herself and her son, who was almost naked as well. Her jail term comes despite a social media campaign waged by some celebrities for her release and then sentencing has got many more reactions. We'll bring you to, uh, I mean, some reactions later on and also, but the judge in handling, uh, handing down Ekapim Polo cited the worrying trend involving celebrities and social media users posting their nude photos and the need to discourage the practice. Her lawyers, led by Andrew Votia, have described the sentence as harsh and says they would appeal. Honestly, the judge is within the selected powers. She has a discretion. Uh, I'm a bit disappointed in here. Uh, of course, the constraint is the mitigating factors that will be canvassed for her being a first time offender, a young offender. Uh, we have a lot of responsibility, single mother, you know, taking care of the, the son and the, the, the mother and the nephews. I mean, folks ought to have considered those things. Uh, but well, the judge is within her certainty power to find in the maximum of years and maintain this. She's within her, her, her powers, so we have nothing much to, to say against what she did. Your client was serving all day long. Would you think that you made a good choice for her to be guilty to this particular case? Yeah, the, I have, when we were at the uh, case management conference stage, uh, we evaluated all the evidence against uh, the pictorial evidence in the, 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 the witness statement. And we realized that we, 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 have, we, have a, we don't have a, 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 good, a good case. You know, so when the case goes to a full trial, the sentence will be harsher. Assuming we are going to the whole trial, two, three months, we are done, 
and she's from the uh, Kobabu. The policeman will be, will be, will be, will be harsh. The Crapin Polo has been reacting in a video she posted on Instagram. Hi guys, as you know, this is your one and only sexy polo, a grabbing polo, yeah, Rosamond Brown. I just want to use this opportunity to say thanks to all my legends who supported me. I saw the hashtag, especially with Rastoon, Sako the Stone Boy, Bridget O2, Hajia For Real, Akuma Mazimbi, DKB. Oh, I can't mention it all, please. I saw all this, all the bloggers who use the platform to support me. I saw the hashtag. I love you. I know you people love me and I love you too. The bloggers. Mommy, those go celebrity. I know you love me. I'm stubborn, but you still show me love. I saw the money you sent, mommy, for my son. We are grateful. Guys, you know your girl is strong. Sometimes in life, you have to pass through some things to make you strong, to get to somewhere. I know it's a test. I have to go through. I'm strong. You guys know. Please, all that I need is your prayers and your support. Your girl will be back with you guys. I love you. Thank you, Tunde. Thank you, all my Nigerian celebrities. Thank you, all my Ghana celebrities. All my over the world who are supporting me. Yeah, Jackson, I love you, sister. I know you love me. I love everyone who has supported me to this. Your girl loves you. If they pay you, kiss, kiss. Ah. <laughs> The Gravin Polo has been trending on social media with several celebrities discussing her sentence and general citizens having been left out of the conversation. We asked on Facebook what you make of the sentence and we'll be reading some of your comments. But before then, the executive director of Child Rights International took the initial step to bring the issue of the exposure of the child to the attention of the police. The argument at the time was that the actress had subjected her seven-year-old son to the incident uh, indecent scene. The NGO has since indicated that it will issue a statement in the coming days to make its position clear on the sentence. And by joining me via Zoom is Executive Director of Child Rights Online Protection, Awo Aidam. Uh, Awo, I'm grateful for your time. D do you share the view that the sentencing is too harsh or you are with those asking for more? Um, good evening to your viewers. Um, Aisha, the, the, the fact of the matter is that everybody is talking about the lady, the lady, the lady. Nobody seems to be talking about the child. And if the child does not come into the picture, it was the child's, it was the child's welfare which led the mother to this length. So for me, I wouldn't say the sentence is harsh. I wouldn't say it is not punitive. I would just say it is okay. Because uh, the, in this situation, either to most people thought that Ghana laws don't work. But then if we consider the recently passed uh, uh, act, the Act 1038, I think that's the Cybersecurity Act uh, 2020, it's so clear on this matter. And for me, for the judge to crack the whip at this time, it kind of sends a strong signal to anybody who might engage in this going forward that the law will take its course and you must serve the term. So how about those who argue that the judge should have given a lesser sentence? And I mean, considering the fact that she's a single mother taking care of a seven-year-old, and um, all those arguments. Yeah, the, the point is, uh, she's a single mother. She travels a lot to, to do her programs. When she travels, the child doesn't go with her. So clearly she has a family to keep the child with. She's a single mother. She needs to undergo therapy because what she's doing does not show that she's in a full capacity to take care of the child. And the child also must undergo some kind of psychological uh, therapy 
so that he can stay in the right frame of mind because he could be teased on the way to school and all of that. So all those situations must, must be brought under control. And I want to believe that the period she's serving would suffice that kind of process that she and the child would have to go through in order for them to come back balanced and uh, they are well being well taken care of before they can face the public in future. Mm. The, the judge in, in, in sentencing, uh, giving uh, Kapin Polo the sentence, uh, registered her frustration of, I mean, the recent phenomenon of uh, celebrities sharing nude pictures on social media. What do you want to see going forward? Um, from from this evening, it looks like uh, someone was saying that most of the photos, new photos, are coming down, and it's exciting to see that because we've been talking that, uh, about that over time. You know, it will interest you to know that even Cardi B, who is more like a star to most people here in Ghana, was saying that said on an interview the other day that she doesn't allow her child to watch her videos. What does that tell us? It tells us that, okay, she knows she's doing nudity, but she's doing it for people to see, for her to make her money. So why do we want to exploit children at their innocent age? So it's not right. So we would want to see more of this action taking place and uh, the reform also taking place for everyone. Awo Aidam is Executive Director of Child Online Africa. I'm straight, extremely grateful for your time. Now, there's been mixed reaction on social media. While some believe the sentence is too harsh, others say the punishment appears to be puni punitive than reformatory. Uh, joining me via Zoom for more is Mami Fua, a law lecturer. At the, okay, so Mami Fua, a law lecturer, will be joining me uh, later for some a further discussion on this, but let's check out your comments on Facebook. Let's start with Seth. General Seth says, join news. Can you revisit the verdict of Gregory Afoko? Give us, give his verdict to your media space. He's still, he, he's still time after being granted bail, and it looks like we have all forgotten, okay? So um, this one says, this conspicuous selective rectitude by our judicial system and many other systems in this country against the underprivileged and powerless is upsetting and that is what our chiefs clergy and opinion leaders should be speaking against that is what makes a difference to the larger society banker freeman says in this country if you listen to some people you would die early when the incident happened i called them the loud mouths complaining that uh, are there laws in Ghana? Today, the law is dealing with the person and it's being applied and the loud mouths are saying this is too harsh. So what at all is right and what at all is wrong? Poor country. That's Banker Freeman there. Mark Jima says it serves her right. She's not better than other women who are serving jail terms for minor offenses. Betty or being said there's a way that seemeth right unto man by the end is. And sometimes people misbehave on... Uh, Facebook, all in the name of human rights. She thought it was her right to go naked after all. It was her body, but didn't know her freedom to express her right ends at the tip of another another's nose. What was she thinking? Now that she's going to spend 90 days in custody, it will deter others from exercising their rights negatively. Those are some comments on Facebook. Now, uh, join us as Seth Kwan Boateng has done an extensive work on Ghana's prisons and won several awards with his documentary Locked and Forgotten. He joins us with what he knows about the prison system um, Ikrapim Polo is likely to end up in. Hello, Seth. Hello, Aisha. Good evening. Good evening. Would you know if Ikrapim Polo has started her 90 days jail term already? I, I have done my checks, and it appears um, she wouldn't be in this weekend. They are, they are likely to receive her on Monday uh, because uh, she would have to do her COVID test um, and wait for the results before she can be accepted uh, into any of our uh, prisons. Um, okay. So uh, mm. for now, the information I have is that, that um, she will be uh, uh, in the police station where she was being kept a few days ago. Mm. Uh, why is the COVID test necessary? No, it's, it's a protocol. Be before you are admitted, uh, it's like when you travel and you are coming to the country, 
you do the COVID test at the airport before you allow the entry. It's the same in the prison. It's part of the protocols that you're observing. Mm. But, but which of the prisons is she likely to end up in? Well, the information I have is that it's either in Sawan prisons or Akuta prisons. And um, I, I've been telling, I've been saying this for the period that uh, the female prison or uh, place is like a school dormitory. It's not congested like the, uh, like the uh, male um, uh, place. For example, if you look at in Sawam, the female session has a capacity, the capacity is 200. But the last time I checked, last week, they had 75 inmates in there. The capacity is 200. But as of last week, Friday, exactly week today, they had 75 inmates. Now, that is in Sawam. Let's come to acoustic, um, where the capacity is 12 for the female. But when I checked last week, um, Friday, um, th there were only six. Uh, females in their session. So it's not as congested as the male session of the prison. Mm. So w w um, will she get preferential treatment considering she's a celeb of a sort? <laughs> no, that, that doesn't happen in the prisons. It doesn't happen in the prisons. <laughs> Those who would give you um, such treatment will be the inmates, um, the respect they have for you. But for officers to I called you any preferential treatment doesn't happen. Mm. Um, so as the inmates who would say that, oh, because she's a celebrity, let's let's give her a bed to her. Let's maybe we should not allow her to be doing their things, the normal routine. But for the officers, if it's four, uh, four to five, you are locked up, and they will not, they wouldn't say because you're a celebrity, so you you are not allowed to sleep at four. You have to go in at that time. So there's no preferential treatment for her uh, because she's a celebrity. And I can tell you this um, because I've been there and I know how the system works. Mm. Seth Kwan Boatin is my colleague and producer for Locked and Forgotten, the documentary that got a lot talking and also got the prisons decongested, sort of. Now, Lent for Christ, a Catholic a charity has donated items worth over 34,000 Ghana cities to support the health facility of the Nsawan prisons. Prison officials tell Joy News the hospital was in dire need of the items and expressed gratitude to the group. Judy Tawachi Tando has more in the following report. This is the outpatient department at the Nsawan prisons hospital. Despite its low capacity, it also functions as both the accident and emergency center and the consulting room puts on health staff under immense pressure. The Insawan prisons, home of over 3,000 male inmates, has been in need of a bigger space as well as some equipment for a while in their hospital. ASP Stephen Osei is matron of the prison hospital. You know, OPD is supposed to be OPD and you are supposed to have a separate accident and emergency centre and because we also don't have enough office accommodation, we are using the same office as consulting rooms. In fact, three consulting rooms here, for that matter, three different consulting rooms with three um, PAs performing at the same time. The donation by Lens for Christ is to help solve the challenges the hospital is faced with. The group's representative, Mercy Musa, explains this is part of their mandate as Christians. A part of our duties as Christians to help the needy in the society. Lent is also Lent also helps us to also donate it. As part of it, we are to give alms. So the money you normally use to buy food, you keep that money for the 40 days and then you use it to give um, or give it to someone in need. Inmates in the hospital ward are grateful to the group for their support. Mohammed Suleimana is a patient. Oh, we are really grateful to them. But but we need to be hospital. We need to be We need to be in the hospital. Medical superintendent of the prison hospital, DSP Lawrence Echampong, tells Joy News the equipment will go a long way to solve many problems the hospital is facing currently. But currently we have over 2,000, get about 2,900 inmates in our custody as of today, excluding the officers and their dependents. And these medical equipments are going to serve this over 2,900 people 
plus over a thousand offices. So you can imagine how these equipment have come to help the system in general. While these donations are temporarily supporting the facility, prison officials and inmates are calling on government to help build a much larger facility. Judith Awachetando, Joe News. The story of a 37-year-old woman suffering from breast cancer who was sent away from home together with her 9-year-old child by her husband, where we brought you weeks ago, has received some support from you. Some of you sent in various sums of money to the tune of 2,000 Ghana cities to start with her initial treatment. Abu, as we call her, is grateful for the support. She's also asking for your prayers, especially during this holy month of Ramadan. Correspondent Peter Senna, together with health officials managing Abu, presented the cash amount to her. Abu's plea for help has yielded some results. Cash amount of 2,000 Ghana cities from donors has been presented to Abu to start with her initial treatment. Abu could not hide her emotions about the gesture to her as she broke down with tears before able to master courage to express her appreciation. Some help has come, but it would not suffice. Those of you who have to support, please help. God bless everyone who has helped. I also ask you to help me this fasting and prayer month. One of Abu's co-tenants, Stella, says Abu is struggling with her condition. She is also asking for more support for her. It is not pleasant to see her in pain. Some of you have helped, but it is not enough. We plead for more support for her. Abu's mother was also present at the presentation. I thank you. God bless you all. I don't have the means to support my daughter. Please help me. The district director for health in the Biakuya district, Rita Urapa, whose team is taking care of Abu, led the presentation. She is grateful, but also asking for more support for her as the total cost for her treatment could cost as much as 20,000 Ghana cities. I just want to thank everyone that contributed to this worthy cause. This money that we have raised, 2,000, is going to do something. From the look of things, it will cost about 20000 because we need to do blood transfusion, lab investigations, x-ray, before the chemo can be done or chemotherapy can be done, after which surgery will, will take place. And the chemotherapy, she needs to do about three, four times at a start. Then she will do others before the surgery can be started. So we are still appealing for more donations in terms of cash and kind. Peter Senu for Joy News. You can donate your widow's mind to support Abu. Now, a prayer of thanksgiving and hope for a better life together are some of the prayers of the newlywed as they usher in the month of Ramadan. This year's 30-day fast is different for Mubarak, Adam, and Sahada Bakman because they have started the husband and wife journey as well. Waking up unusually early is a new normal for the young couple. Join us as Mahmoud Muhammad Nouruddin caught up with them. My name is... Mubarak Adam. Um, um, I'm Sahada Bakman. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is how we are preparing to break our fast. That's iftar. Um, we are newly wedded, and this is our first Ramadan into our marriage. Okay, so what I have here is um, 
warm water with blended ginger with some cloves then i'll add some lemon to it and honey to prefer to press something small like a ginger tea or something to break out fast something warm as recommended medically and as you can see i have some lettuce some vegetables here i'll be preparing salad later on too mm. and later we have um some watermelon and bananas here we later prepare some smoothie that we'll take later in the evening mm. so basically that's what we breaking our first bit. Mubarak Adam and Sahara Bachman are just one month into their marriage and the experience of Ramadan at the beginning of their marriage is the perfect opportunity to forge bonds. Experience is, is wonderful since this is our first experience with Ramadan vows in marriage. Previously it's it's it doesn't go like this. You don't get the chance to be asked what will you eat for iftar. You just go home, whatever you get, then you used to break your fast. But as you can see, this is something I asked for and inshallah I'm being provided with it. So it's it's just wonderful. Well, Alhamdulillah it has been cool, it has been okay by God's grace. And it's not really hectic as compared to uh, when I was at my home, back home. Because this year I was preparing for two people and it's not that hectic. So Alhamdulillah, it's been okay. Their first Ramadan is undoubtedly a rewarding experience for those who think Ramadan means no romance. What would be more romantic than waking up together for Sahul? Going on well. Um, at first, when I was at my home, when I'm waking up at dawn, I'll be reluctant or I'll feel reluctant or hesitant to wake up. But here, I know I have something to do. I have a responsibility. I have to put something on the table for my husband. I have to put something for my husband and I. So I wouldn't feel reluctant. I will have to wake up and find something for my husband to eat. And along the lights, okay, it's good. We've been praying together at dawn always anytime we start home we always pray together and i think it's such a nice experience they say ramadan is a good time to create new habits either by waking up early or praying together they build ties that will last forever but how did it feel a week before their marriage so i was actually looking forward to that day and i was a bit nervous to be honest and as well as I was happy as well. So it was kind of nervous. Um, <laughs> you know, you not uh, having knowledge of the unseen. You don't know what awaits you in the in your marriage. Mar Barak feels he was lucky enough to meet his supportive wife before Ramadan. The spirit of marriage and fasting makes them feel good. So I would like to thank him very much for everything, for everything actually. Um, I want you, to, I want you to continue doing the good works you've been doing and helping me gain rewards. Waking me up um, at dawn to perform the Nafu prayers, reciting the Quran together, encouraging me to recite the Quran, and always helping me in the kitchen and household chores too. I really thank you so much, and may Allah bless you abundantly. <laughs> <laughs> I want to, I want her to continue with how she has been treating me so far. She provided me with whatever I want to eat and <laughs> encouraging me to wake up for Tahajjud prayers, recite the Quran after Fajr. Marriage 
is a new chapter in life. Mubarak and Sahada believe every man and woman should pass this beautiful stage of marriage. What I want to tell brothers out there who are not yet married is that if only they are capable of getting married, they should go ahead and find somebody as beautiful as my wife <laughs> who is very caring and just settle down with the person. As we know in Islam, we know that if you get married, you fulfill half of your dream. So well, I think they should get married if only they are capable of doing so. Okay, so what I would like to say to the ladies out there is if you know you have you have someone and the person is and the person wants to marry you and you think the person is okay, you think he's the right person for you. And you shouldn't say you are not ready yet or you are too young for marriage or you are not mentally ready or psychologically ready or something. You have to psych your mind. As a lady, yeah. As a lady, you will definitely get married and it's a good thing. Marriage is a good thing. So I would advise each and every lady out there to get married as soon as possible if they find the right person. And Allah will help them, inshallah. Ramadan is a time when Muslims across the world celebrate, reflect on the purpose of life, and draw closer to Allah. For Mubarak and Sahada, this year's Ramadan is very special because they are not single but wife and husband. A report by Mohammed Nuruddin. Wow, these guys are in love. Did you see how they were flashing? <laughs> Anyway, Ramadan Kareem to all Muslims out there. We'll take a break on Joy News Prime. We'll bring you second segment of Business with Charles Aite. And it's time for business. The Trade Minister Alain Germantin has been meeting with the High Commissioners of Switzerland and Canada in a bid to improve relations. Let's take a listen to his interactions with them. In our effort to escalate our relationship, uh, to adopt a new framework mm -hmm. for collaboration that goes beyond a normal development and cooperation uh, framework. And I'd like us to explore the possibility of establishing a Ghana Canada uh, Business Council, which will provide an opportunity for us to deepen our engagement, particularly in the area of uh, business and private sector uh, development. Uh, we have a number of strategic countries that uh, we've established this framework with, and so far uh, the results have been very significant. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I, I hope that we can discuss this in a little bit more uh, detail. And I also would like to emphasize that the establishment of the African Continental Free Trade Area, which is headquartered in Ghana, offers an opportunity for Canada to use Ghana as your new gateway uh, to the African market. Um, uh, already we have established uh, on our own a national office for the African Continental Free Trade Area, um, apart from the Continental uh, Headquarters. And we have also developed a blueprint or an action plan for harnessing the benefits of the AFC. Meanwhile, the High Commissioner of Canada to Ghana, Kati Shaba, who led the delegation, stated that Canada is exploring investment avenues in Ghana for their partner institutions abroad. Which was sent to our Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, uh, that outlined some, some very specific areas where, where Ghana was looking for cooperation with Canada, particularly in the area of trade and investment. Uh, that letter included a list of industries, some of which you mentioned today, uh, that, uh, that were seen to be, uh, to offer good potential for, for Canadian investment, for, for Canadian activity. And I wanted to let you know that my colleagues, 
here have been working closely to go through that, that list uh, in the letter from the President uh, and to see how they can match those interests against uh, the capacities of Canadian companies. So this is something that we are actively working on and uh, and it's something that we will will hope to discuss uh, with colleagues from your from your ministry in the in the coming in the coming months. I also uh, am, am uh, very well aware of your One District, One Factory uh, uh, flagship program, uh, and we also feel that this offers some uh, some opportunities. And, and I wanted to bring to your int attention one particular project that is already underway. Uh, there is a Canadian company, uh, Canadian Guardian Fire Shield, that uh, that pr that uh, has a that prepares fire. Uh, suppression technology uh, that is very um, that is very effective and efficient, uh, and the their idea in uh, in looking to uh, to to advance their investment here in Ghana. Away from that, the automobile dealers union of Ghana has moved to provide the general public easy access to car loan facilities through its partnership with private entity AutoCheck. Now this, according to the union, will go a long way to expand businesses of its members, thereby creating jobs in the automotive industry. The Vice President of the Automobile Dealers Union of Ghana, Nanae Dubons, spoke at the AutoCheck signing event with the union held in Accra. We realize that um, assessing auto loans from the various financial institutions that we already have, the traditional banks, became um, something difficult. And uh, Adag decided to look for a partner who can bring this innovative way and more flexible way of accessing loans, auto loans especially, for customers. We've been in talk and they came out with a lot of innovative ideas and we thought it is very important. We decided to go through a lot of meetings and finally today we have come to the fruition. It's a great boost. It's going to, I mean, we, we have really as, a, a, um, experienced astronomical increase in our sales with the introduction of automobile um, auto check into our industry. The last six months have been quite great for every dealer who is in partnership with auto check. They have a very good marketing skills, they are innovative, and they are using the, the, the innovative way, like technology. You can just apply a car loan or buy a car or on your phone. You don't need to walk into a garage somewhere or a dealership somewhere. You just pick your phone, access their website, and put in an application. If you qualify, they invite you to their office, and then within 48 hours, your dream car is being driven away. Meanwhile, the head of human resource and business compliance at AutoCheck, Yvonne Ahile, says that the partnership seeks to protect both car dealers and buyers against fraudsters. The Ghana automobile industry has been invaded with a lot of fraudsters. And like the president of ADOC said, this issue has been persistent for long and they've been looking forward to a partnership where it can be clean and genuine and certified for all car purchasers or all buyers to assess their cars without fraud. And this partnership agreement makes that possible because AutoCheck combines technology with the automobile and makes this very easy and transparent for every everyone to be able to assess a car without issues of being afraid that there will be fraud or there will be any issues. Because of our technology, it makes things easier and very transparent. ADOC is represented across all the regions in Ghana, so with our partnership with ADOC, we are going to move across all the regions, so you don't have to only be in Accra to assess cars from AutoCheck, wherever you are in Ghana, you'll be able to assess cars based on the partnership agreements with AutoCheck, ADOC. At this particular moment, we bring you updates on the issues related to business stories in the world around us.
course, that's it for business. Sports is up next. Just stay. Many thanks for staying with us here on Joy News Prime Time to bring you the second installment of sports. My name is Hans Mainzan, and the second round of the National Division One League has begun. Only one game was played today in Swatreman FC. They suffered a 2 0 defeat at the hands of Tanob of Aqua in Zone 2. But the real action is at Zone 1, where the Tamale based clubs could secure qualification to Ghana's top flight. Real Tamale United, Steadfast FC, and Tamale City battle for the sole ticket to the country's elite division. No Tamale club has competed in the Ghana Premier League since RTU were relegated in 2013. Former Ghana international Hamza Mohamed, who is the head coach of Tamale City, is confident his side can break Tamale's eight-year jinx. Here is a report by Joy Sports, George Ado Jr. Tamale City, one of the clubs here in Tamale, hoping to take the place of Real Tamale United. That is if there's anything like that. They currently sit on the table and are looking forward to qualifying to the Ghana Premier League. As you're aware, the northern sector, all the regions inclusive, have no representative in the Ghana Premier League. But there's a growing sense of optimism that it might happen this year. We're here to find out the inner workings of the club Tamale City and why they may just be the most qualified out of the three. I'm talking Real Tamale United and Steadfast. Another true son of the land, Hamza Mohammed, former player of Real Tamale United, one of the few national stars who are featured for every national team, captain of the Black Star Flight in 1999 and was in the Black Star squad that took part in the 2006 and 2002 Africa Cup of Nations. Hamza says, he took on this role to bridge the gap between Tamale and the Ghana Premier League. We did our best, try all that we can for the past three seasons. I mean, I'm in Tamale City. Number 12 came and truncated everything. And then um, all my two two came. We were almost there until that unfortunate thing happened. Uh, we are still working out and God being so good this time, I think the three teams, we have a good profit to, to make it this time. So we are just hoping to see what will happen. But the most important thing is just to get the Premier League here in Tamale. If we believe Tamas City, if not the of number COVID 12, and then number 12. Yes, we we'll will have it because we are leading like eight points until that unfortunate thing happened. Um, we'll take it on a good stride and um, as you can see on the log, Tamal City up to you, we are at the top, at least the first five. Uh, not to look down upon Bufo, Aqua B, you know, the, the mighty rest over there. I mean, they cause a threat to us, but uh, looking at what we are doing, we want to believe it to continue that definitely this is we should get a Premier League in Tamale. Hamza insists Tamale City are hardly out of gear and should be the chosen one among the three to pick the Division 1 slot for Zone 1. I'm basically, R2 is a tra mm. tradition. When mm. talk of Tamale, Tamale is about R2, but uh, mm. they also have their problems. I'm happy they've now reorganized and then trying to challenge and yeah. make it to uh, the Premier this time. I hope it will continue that way. Um, Tamale City, we had our plans. Unfortunately, uh, our directors, those who were supporting us, <laughs> shift come bit, yeah. to RTU. Mm. I believe that's why they are doing well. But we are also doing our best. And if we also do our best, RTU is doing what they are doing. Definitely, we should have a Premier League here. And Steadfast too is doing wonderful. So definitely, mm. we should have at least a Premier League. This natural talent, uh, talk of the Abedi Pillars, the Mohamed Gagos, Mubarak Wakasos, don't talk of even Hamza Mohamed and the rest. Recently, Abdel Fatal from the North. We have better players than Abdel Fatal in the North. People are not looking at that. But we are happy. Is now in the limelight. Determination and hard work at play is seamless, flowing from the management through to the fans and down to the playing body. Even though everything is by luck, maybe you might think, oh, this, uh, this is a season for you to go into the Premier it, it will be a very bad season for you. Okay, so I'm assuring Tamai City fans that inshallah we'll try our best to put the team into Premier coming next season. They will also be getting the premier matches to watch in Tamale. Uh, come and uh, come to training their numbers, cheer us up, and uh, we also do the work for them. When we see them always, we know that we, uh, we feel that uh, they, uh, they, they are important to us, and we also want to do something uh, in return for them to be happy. And this is how the tables looks like in the National Division One League after the first round. We've seen that on 
Your screen pretty shortly. There you go. So, Brekumas now, the zone one standing, Brekumas now leading the pack 31 points and steadfast in second place 30 points. Real Tamale United 30 points and Tamale City. Three teams from Northern Ghana all on 30 points in um, second and second, third and fourth respectively. Bofakwa, Wamena for Mighty Royals and Young Apostle as well as um, uh, in Swatraman follow in that order. And then there is Boha for United in Kwanza Warriors occupying 8th and 9th respectively. Kintampu FC in 11th. 12th place, Techiman City FC. Wa Sunta FC in 13th position. Unity FC in 14th. Yendi, Bewa FC and Crocodile Stars um, in 16th place. Zone 2, BBN Gold Stars on 34 points. Sky FC. Um, with 32 points, FC Summer Techs 1996 on 28 points, New Edubia CFC in fourth place on 26 points, second Dia Zakes in fifth place on 22 points, there is Achikin FC, um, Bekwai Youth Football Academy in seventh place, Wasserman eighth on the Zone 2 Division 1 league standings. And then there is uh, Asokwa Deportivo. Unistar Academy and Venmos Vipers in 9th, 10th and 11th respectively. And there is also Swede All Blacks, Pacific Heroes FC in Zemakotoko, 14th, Star Madrid 15th, Proud United 16th on that Zone 2 Division 1 League standings. Zone 3, Tema Youth leading the park, 33 points. Accra Lions FC on 32 points. Bando Hearts of Lions on 29 points in third place, Oda Kotoku Royals FC um, in fourth place on 28 point days, Ochiman Planes, Far Rangers, Accra City Stars FC, Akosombo Crystal Palace Academy in eighth place on 23 points. And then there's Accra Young Boys FC, FC Narnia in 10th place, Dan Bort, Vision FC to the Mighty Jets occupying 11, 12, and 13th. And it's Prom Prom, Uncle T, United FC. We're just 15 points in 14th. Agbozume Weavers, um, 15th with 5 points. And Amidal's Professionals, or have they been playing? No points so far um, on the league table. And that's it for sport. There is more at myjoyonline.com forward slash sports. My name is Hans Mainsando. Many thanks for your time. So let's take more of your comments on Ikriapin Polo, who's been sentenced 90 days uh, in prison. And uh, because the comments keep coming, the issue has... Um <sighs> that Kosh Tabuache says, this is a needless question. The law is the law, and anyone found guilty of any offense must not go unpunished. We are tired of people posting all sort of nude images on social media. This should serve as a lesson for us all. Faith, hope, love says, it's unfortunate and means that the laws in Ghana are swiftly applied to the poor, parlors, and destitute in our societies, while those who commit white color crimes find themselves on the safer sides because of involvement of public officers. This has also given the way for us to rethink about the laws of Ghana and make the necessary amendments to introduce community service as a punishment rather than custodial punishment. The sitting judge should have extensively considered a number of factors to introduce non-custodial sentence other than a fine. And of course, um, your most authoritative news analysis program, News File, this Saturday, hosted by Samson Ladi and Yenene, and his panel will continue the discussion on land management, renewing the failed war against illegal mining and road crashes, which is claiming many lives on our roads. Make a date. And that's how we wrap up the bulletin tonight. My name is Aisha Ibrahim. Many thanks for watching. For more news, log on to myjohnline.com. Over there, you get more of our news and you get updates on developing story. I've indeed enjoyed my two hours. Stay with you. Have a great one.